The Mie solution to Maxwell's equations, also known as the Lorenz Mie solution, the Lorenz Mie Debye solution, or Mie scattering, describes the scattering of an electromagnetic plane wave by a homogeneous sphere. The solution takes the form of an infinite series of spherical multipole partial waves. It is named after Gustav Mie. The term Mie solution is also used for solutions of Maxwell's equations for scattering by stratified spheres or by infinite cylinders, or other geometries where one can write separate equations for the radial and angular dependence of solutions. The term Mie theory is sometimes used for this collection of solutions and methods, it does not refer to an independent physical theory or law. More broadly, Mie scattering suggest situations where the size of the scattering particles is comparable to the wavelength of the light, rather than much smaller or much larger. Mie scattering sometimes referred to as a non-molecular or aerosol particle scattering takes place in the lower 4.5 km of the atmosphere, where there may be many essentially spherical particles present with diameters approximately equal to the size of the wavelength of the incident energy. Mie scattering theory has no upper size limitation, and converges to the limit of geometric optics for large particles. Introduction A modern formulation of the Mie solution to the scattering problem on a sphere can be found in many books, e.g., J. A. Stratton's electromagnetic theory. In this formulation, the incident plane wave, as well as the scattering field, is expanded into radiating spherical vector wave functions. The internal field is expanded into regular spherical vector wave functions. By enforcing the boundary condition on the spherical surface, the expansion coefficients of the scattered field can be computed. For particles much larger or much smaller than the wavelength of the scattered light there are simple and excellent approximations that suffice to describe the behavior of the system. But for objects whose size is similar to the wavelength, e.g., water droplets in the atmosphere, latex particles in paint, droplets in emulsions, including milk, and biological cells and cellular components, a more exact approach is necessary. The Mie solution is named after its developer, German physicist Gustav Mie. Danish physicist Ludwig Lorenz and others independently developed the theory of electromagnetic plane wave scattering by a dielectric sphere. The formalism allows the calculation of the electric and magnetic fields inside and outside a spherical object and is generally used to calculate either how much light is scattered, the total optical cross section, or where it goes, the form factor. The notable features of these results are the Mie resonances, sizes that scatter particularly strongly or weakly. This is in contrast to Rayleigh scattering for small particles and Rayleigh Garnes Debye scattering after Lord Rayleigh, Richard Garnes and Peter Debye for large particles. The existence of resonances and other features of Mie scattering make it a particularly useful formalism when using scattered light to measure particle size. Topic. Computational codes Mie solutions are implemented in a number of programs written in different computer languages such as Fortran, MATLAB, and Mathematica. These solutions are in terms of infinite series and include calculation of scattering phase function, extinction, scattering, and absorption efficiencies, and other parameters such as asymmetry parameter or radiation torque. Current usage of a Mie solution indicates a series approximation to a solution of Maxwell's equations. There are several known objects that allow such a solution spheres, concentric spheres, infinite cylinders, cluster of spheres, and cluster of cylinders. There are also known series solutions for scattering on ellipsoidal particles. For a list of these specialized codes, examine these articles. Codes for electromagnetic scattering by spheres, solutions for a single sphere, coated spheres, multilayer sphere, and cluster of spheres Codes for electromagnetic scattering by cylinders, solutions for a single cylinder, multilayer cylinders, and cluster of cylinders, a generalization that allows a treatment of more generally shaped particles is the T-matrix method, which also relies on the series approximation to solutions of Maxwell's equations. Q. 
Topic: Approximations. Topic: Rayleigh approximation scattering. Rayleigh scattering describes the elastic scattering of light by spheres that are much smaller than the wavelength of light. The intensity I of the scattered radiation is given by I equals I zero one plus cos two theta two R two two Pi Lambda four N two minus one N two plus two two D two six Display style I equals I underscore zero left frac one plus cos carrot two theta two R carrot two right left frac two pi lambda right carrot four left frac and carrot two minus one and carrot two plus two right carrot two left frac D two right carrot six where I zero is the light intensity before the interaction with the particle, R is the distance between the particle and the observer, theta is the scattering angle, N is the refractive index of the particle, and D is the diameter of the particle. It can be seen from the above equation that Rayleigh scattering is strongly dependent upon the size of the particle and the wavelengths. The intensity of the Rayleigh scattered radiation increases rapidly as the ratio of particle size to wavelength increases. Furthermore, the intensity of Rayleigh scattered radiation is identical in the forward and reverse directions. The Rayleigh scattering model breaks down when the particle size becomes larger than around 10% of the wavelength of the incident radiation. In the case of particles with dimensions greater than this, Mie's scattering model can be used to find the intensity of the scattered radiation. The intensity of Mie scattered radiation is given by the summation of an infinite series of terms rather than by a simple mathematical expression. It can be shown, however, that scattering in this range of particle sizes differs from Rayleigh scattering in several respects, it is roughly independent of wavelength and it is larger in the forward direction than in the reverse direction. The greater the particle size, the more of the light is scattered in the forward direction. The blue color of the sky results from Rayleigh scattering, as the size of the gas particles in the atmosphere is much smaller than the wavelength of visible light. Rayleigh scattering is much greater for blue light than for other colors due to its shorter wavelength. As sunlight passes through the atmosphere, its blue component is Rayleigh scattered strongly by atmospheric gases but the longer wavelength e red, yellow, components are not. The sunlight arriving directly from the sun therefore appears to be slightly yellow, while the light scattered through rest of the sky appears blue. During sunrises and sunsets, the effect of Rayleigh scattering on the spectrum of the transmitted light is much greater due to the greater distance the light rays have to travel through the high-density air near the Earth's surface. In contrast, the water droplets that make up clouds are of a comparable size to the wavelengths in visible light, and the scattering is described by Mies model rather than that of Rayleigh. Here, all wavelengths of visible light are scattered approximately identically, and the clouds therefore appear to be white or gray. <laughs> Rayleigh-Ghans approximation The Rayleigh-Ghans approximation is an approximate solution to light scattering when the relative refractive index of the particle is close to unity, and its size is much smaller in comparison to the wavelength of light divided by, n1, where n is the refractive index. <laughs> Anomalous diffraction approximation of van der Hulst The anomalous diffraction approximation is valid for large compared to wavelength and optically soft spheres. 
Soft in the context of optics implies that the refractive index of the particle M differs only slightly from the refractive index of the environment, in comparison with scattering of acoustic waves, and the particle subjects the wave to only a small phase shift, the extinction efficiency in this approximation is given by Q equals 2 minus 4 P sin P plus 4 P 2 1 minus cos p display style q equals 2 frac 4 p sin p plus frac 4 p caret 2 1 cos p where q is the efficiency factor of scattering which is defined as the ratio of the scattering cross section and geometrical cross section pi a2 the term p equals 4 pi a n minus 1 lambda has as its physical meaning the phase delay of the wave passing through the center of the sphere, where a is the sphere radius, n is the ratio of refractive indices inside and outside of the sphere, and lambda the wavelength of the light. This set of equations was first described by van der Holst in 1957. Topic: Applications. Mi theory is very important in meteorological optics, where diameter to wavelength ratios of the order of unity and larger are characteristic for many problems regarding haze and cloud scattering. A further application is in the characterization of particles by optical scattering measurements. The Mi solution is also important for understanding the appearance of common materials like milk, biological tissue and latex paint. Topic. Atmospheric science Mi scattering occurs when the diameters of atmospheric particulates are similar to the wavelengths of the scattered light. Dust, pollen, smoke and microscopic water droplets that form clouds are common causes of Mi scattering. Mi scattering occurs mostly in the lower portions of the atmosphere, where larger particles are more abundant, and dominates in cloudy conditions. Topic. Cancer detection and screening Mi theory has been used to determine whether scattered light from tissue corresponds to healthy or cancerous cell nuclei using angle-resolved low-coherence interferometry. Topic. Magnetic particles A number of unusual electromagnetic scattering effects occur for magnetic spheres. When the relative permittivity equals the permeability, the back scatter gain is zero. Also, the scattered radiation is polarized in the same sense as the incident radiation. In the small particle or long wavelength limit, conditions can occur for zero forward scatter, for complete polarization of scattered radiation in other directions, and for asymmetry of forward scatter to backscatter. The special case in the small particle limit provides interesting special instances of complete polarization and forward scatter to backscatter asymmetry. Topic: Metamaterial Mi theory has been used to design metamaterials. They usually consist of three-dimensional composites of metal or non-metallic inclusions periodically or randomly embedded in a low permittivity matrix. In such a scheme, the negative constitutive parameters are designed to appear around the Mi resonances of the inclusions, the negative effective permittivity is designed around the resonance of the Mi electric dipole scattering coefficient, whereas negative effective permeability is designed around the resonance of the Mi magnetic dipole scattering coefficient, and doubly negative material DNG is designed around the overlap of resonances of Mi electric and magnetic dipole scattering coefficients. The particle usually have the following combinations One set of magnetodielectric particles with values of relative permittivity and permeability much greater than one and close to each other 
two different dielectric particles with equal permittivity but different size two different dielectric particles with equal size but different permittivity in theory the particles analyzed by me theory are commonly spherical but in practice particles are usually fabricated as cubes or cylinders for ease of fabrication to meet the criteria of homogenization, which may be stated in the form that the lattice constant is much smaller than the operating wavelength, the relative permittivity of the dielectric particles should be much greater than 1, e.g. epsilon r greater than 78 38 display style var epsilon underscore text r greater than 78 38 to achieve negative effective permittivity permeability. Topic: <inaudible> Particle sizing. Me theory is often applied in laser diffraction analysis to inspect the particle sizing effect. While early computers in the 1970s were only able to compute diffraction data with the more simple Fraunhofer approximation, Mi is widely used since the 1990s and officially recommended for particles below 50 micrometers in guideline ISO 13321 to 2009. Mi theory has been used in the detection of oil concentration in polluted water. Mi scattering is the primary method of sizing single sonoluminescing bubbles of air in water and is is valid for cavities in materials, as well as particles in materials, as long as the surrounding material is essentially non-absorbing. <laughs> Parasitology It has also been used to study the structure of Plasmodium falciparum, a particularly pathogenic form of malaria. Topic. Extensions In 1986 P. A. Bobbitt and J. Vlieger extended the Mi model to calculate scattering by a sphere in a homogeneous medium placed on flat surface. Like Mi model, the extended model can be applied to spheres with a radius close to the wavelength of the incident light. There is a C++ code implementing Bobbitt Vlieger model. See also Computational electromagnetics Light scattering by particles List of atmospheric radiative transfer codes Optical properties of water and ice